Hey guys, what a time to be alive, huh? What a time to be alive. Hopefully everybody's happy, healthy, and safe, that you're social distancing responsibly, and that you haven't gone stir crazy yet. It's been a few days since Bloomingdale shut down and life as we know it was turned on its ear due to the coronavirus pandemic. A lot of us have a newfound chunk of time on our hands that we didn't plan on having. Some of us have our kids at home, so that presents an additional level of complication, but that's okay. We'll take this time and we will use it constructively. If I sound a little blown up, I apologize. I'm on the treadmill as we speak, trying to get back into a workout regimen that I stopped before I started working at Bloomingdale's. I read three audiobooks this week too. So I know like I read them, but like I did. I paid attention. And most importantly, I'm staying sharp in the kitchen, being creative, so that way when they call my number, I can get back in the game ready to go. So that's why these couple of episodes that we're gonna do are gonna be geared specifically to things you may have gotten on that extra large grocery shop that you may have done. A lot of non-perishables, a lot of frozen foods, a lot of canned goods, and some substitutions you can make based on what you have. At the end of the day, food is about creativity, it's about sharing, and it's about flexibility. Do what you want with what you have on hand. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna get off this treadmill, I'm gonna take a shower, and we're gonna get to work. <sighs> Much better. The menu for this week's episode of As You Eat It is going to have a decidedly Mexican flair to it. We're making a shrimp and potato soup, along with a Mexican tuna melt. And for dessert, because there's always dessert, we're making sweet and spicy pineapple empanadas with a honey lime ricotta cheese. Let's start with that first. For the caramelized pineapple filling, start with one half cup of granulated sugar and one half cup dark brown sugar in a nine inch skillet over medium heat. Add in ground ginger, ground cinnamon, and jalapeno chili seasoning to taste. I'm gonna give that a little stir here and let those spices bloom before adding in our butter. Two tablespoons of unsalted butter go into the mix. I'm gonna give that a little stir here, let that melt into the sugar. Basically, we're gonna make a little caramel. While that's working, we're gonna cut the ends off of this pineapple here and trim down the side, making sure we get all those eyes off of there. You certainly can use canned pineapple as well, but make sure you drain it. It's about two cups. Make planks, then into sticks, then into cubes. Scoop it up into a bowl and into our sugar and spice mixture it goes. Stir to combine. As the pineapple cooks and breaks down, it'll release juices and loosen up our caramel. Swirl in about a teaspoon of vanilla bean paste and stir to combine as well. If you can't find vanilla bean paste, you can use vanilla extract. Next up, about a quarter cup of white rum and safety first, remove the pan from the heat Add your rum and then put the pan back over the heat with the bottle away from the pan, just in case there's a little flambe action. We're gonna let this pineapple cook down until tender, occasionally swirling and shaking the pan about 15 minutes or until you insert a paring knife and it comes out without resistance. Transfer to a work bowl and set aside to cool, breaking up any larger pieces with a potato masher. Let's turn our attention to the empanada dough. I'm using frozen empanada dough today, but you certainly can use homemade if you like. The key to working with this dough is even pressure in one direction and then the other before giving the dough a quarter turn. We'll fill with our pineapple filling here. I'm using this really cool empanada slash dumpling press that I got from a kitchen supply store for like nine bucks. You can always go old school if you like, fold over the dough, press out the air, and then seal with a fork. To make sure our empanadas are golden brown, we're going to make an egg wash out of one egg and a quarter cup of milk beaten together. Spray a little nonstick on, place our empanadas on, 
and then brush them with our egg wash. Make sure you get in all the crevices of the pleats. Turn them over and repeat the process before dusting with raw unsweetened coconut. And the egg wash is gonna help it stick. Bake at 425 for about 20 minutes, turning halfway through. That's gonna give us time to work on our honey lime ricotta cheese. About a tablespoon of ricotta cheese, the zest and juice of one lime, and about a tablespoon of honey, just right in there, and a pinch of salt. Mix it together until smooth. We're gonna serve these bad boys family style, so onto the platter they go, along with a dipping bowl of our honey lime ricotta cheese. Nice. Next up, we're gonna make our tuna salad, which is the star of our Mexican tuna melt. If you don't like tuna or you don't have tuna on hand, you certainly can use rotisserie chicken or you can use chicken that you've cooked off. You can use salmon as well. You can really play around with this one, guys. Check it out. It all starts with the tuna fish. I'm using three cans of solid white albacore, but you certainly can use Italian tuna in oil or canned salmon, whatever you have on hand. Next up, we're going to use half of this onion, reserving the other one for later. Peeling off the skin, and then planks, sticks, and then cubes. There it comes. For a fresher onion flavor, we're gonna add two scallions to the mix. We're gonna start by trimming off the ends, then cutting in half, and then roughly chopping. Time for the herbs, as we're gonna go with equal parts of cilantro and flat leaf parsley, about two tablespoons each, Roughly chopped using the rock and chop method. Now everything goes into the bowl. Our onions, about a tablespoon of capers for a salty briny bite, the scallions, our herbs, the juice of a lime, salt and pepper to taste, freshly ground is always best on the pepper, and about two to three tablespoons of mayo. Mix to combine. Give it a taste, see if you need to adjust your seasoning. We're good. Wrap it up and into the fridge it goes. Next up, the shrimp and potato soup. It's kind of like a cross between a sopa de mariscos and a Manhattan clam chowder. Don't have shrimp on hand? You certainly can use clams or you can always omit them entirely and make the soup vegetarian. Check it out. While our stock pot is heating over medium, let's deal with our vegetables. We're going to start by roughly chopping three ribs of celery, like so. The reserved half an onion from our tuna salad, we're going to go planks, and then sticks, and then rough cubes. We're gonna smash, peel, and chop three cloves of garlic. Then we're going to stem and seed a jalapeno. You can use a demi-test spoon for this, or a grapefruit spoon is fine as well. Slice it up into a rough chop. Two tablespoons of butter go into our heated stock pot. We're just gonna swirl that around a little bit to coat. Add a little extra olive oil, about a teaspoon or so, before adding in our vegetables. Make sure you get it all there. Waste not, want not. Give it a nice little stir. Get it all our vegetables coated in the olive oil and butter. Season with a little bit of salt, some Mexican oregano, and freshly cracked black pepper. We're gonna saute this for about two to three minutes just to make sure we get some color because color equals flavor. Next up, we're gonna add in one quart of vegetable stock, followed by a 28 ounce can of diced tomatoes, one bay leaf, and a quart of water using our vegetable stock container as a handy dandy measuring cup. Cover and bring to a simmer. While we're waiting for the broth to come to a simmer, let's deal with our potatoes. We're gonna use two large russet potatoes, roughly chopped. Into the pot they go. Give a nice big stir there, top to bottom, bottom to top. And then bring to a boil, reduce it to a simmer, and simmer until the potatoes are tender. That's somewhere in around 40 minutes. Towards the end of the 40 minutes, we're going to add in a pound of frozen corn for a nice little pop of sweetness. Right in there. Give a nice little stir. While the corn is heating through, let's take the opportunity to open and drain a 15 ounce can of black beans. Now, the reason we want to drain our beans before it goes into the soup is that we don't want this thick liquid in our soup. It'll throw off the color and the texture, and we don't want that. So let's make sure we give it a nice rinse 
and a shake. Into the pot they go. We'll give a nice big stir and then we'll hold the soup over low so the flavors get a chance to marry just until we're ready to serve. It's time to put our tuna melt together. Heat your cast iron griddle over medium to medium high and set your oven to 350 degrees to melt the cheese. If you don't have a cast iron griddle, that's okay. Use your broiler for everything. Our bread of choice for the sandwich is gonna be a baguette today since we are cooking for four people. We're just gonna split it in half with our bread knife. Coat all sides with olive oil, like so. Using a squeeze bottle is super handy for this. And then onto the griddle it goes. Might have to play with the configuration there, but there we go. While the baguette is toasting, let's deal with the melt part of our tuna melt. In this case, it's pepper jack cheese. Four ounces in roughly thin slices. Check on that bread. We're gonna give it a nice little flip. Kind of Tetris this thing back together. Come on. All right. Pat it down a little bit so it gets some nice color and some contact with the griddle. Our bread's looking good here, so we're just gonna get that off and transfer it back onto our sheet pan here. Before adding on our tuna salad, I'm using a slotted spoon just in case there's any additional moisture in the bowl. Followed by our pepper jack. And then our bread top. If you use your broiler to toast the bread, turn it off and let the residual heat melt the cheese. Otherwise bake at 350 degrees for about five to seven minutes. Transfer to a cutting board, cut in four pieces, and it's almost dinner time. Time to finish the shrimp soup, garnish it, and then it's dinner time. Half a pound of cooked shelled shrimp goes into our soup. We're gonna give it a nice big stir and let that come up to temp for about mm, five to 10 minutes. Keep an eye on it though. We don't want the shrimp to get rubbery. Add a nice big ladle in, followed by a squeeze of lime, a little cilantro, and a wedge of avocado. Take the pit out. Nice score. And pluck out our wedge. Let's eat. watching. I hope you enjoyed watching the video as much as I enjoyed making it for you. As always, like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Follow me on Instagram at TheChefZ. Follow me on Facebook, As You Eat It. If you would like to be an executive producer of As You Eat It, the Patreon link is below. Follow along, make a contribution. I will be eternally grateful. I know that in these uncertain times, your money is worth its weight in gold and I completely understand but if you want to make a contribution I will be eternally grateful like I said as always cook how you want to cook eat how you want to eat cope how you want to cope eat as you eat it stay safe be well stay healthy peace